Hey everyone! As you continue to watch this video, you'll notice that I'm wearing something completely different. You know why? Because I forgot to turn the mic on. I really wanted to make this video because it is my 10th year on YouTube and I thought that it would be an interesting exercise to react to my old Instagram photos. I noticed the day that I filmed this video, I was really nervous and anxious and scared because for me personally, I didn't know like what photos I was going to be seeing because Christina pulled everything up so everything was a surprise to me and it is really scary for me to look back on photos and videos of myself before I came out. There's a fuller story behind singular images or singular videos that we see and we don't often see like the reflective place of like those posts on the internet. I hope that you enjoy it and now we're just gonna throw things over to past me wearing something totally different. Let's get started. Oh my god! Okay, I was actually thinking about this not too long ago. I remember the actual shooting of the video was just like a really sad process, unfortunately. I don't know if that's something that people wanna hear, but that is the honest truth. It was so hard and I remember I was in this like perfectionist mindset of like, it has to look exactly this way. And looking at this now, I'm like, oh my God, I did such a good job putting these outfits together. But I remember when I made this video, I was like, Ugh, they suck. It makes me a little bit sad seeing me in these photos because I'm smiling, but I was so frustrated. And it just makes me wanna like hug this past version of myself. Cause I was thinking about it recently. Like remember when you would just spiral into these like perfectionist places and it was really dark. And this was one of the things that came to mind. Oh my. God, okay, I don't remember taking this photo and it's a little Pomeranian that looks scarily similar to Tato. This is actually kind of creepy that I've like foreshadowed my future dog this long ago. Oh my God, vlog mess. Also, look at my nail polish. I feel like the theme here is going to be Ingrid is a perfectionist. I know a lot of people look at that and they're like, but why is that a bad thing? I think that for me, my perfectionism can really hold me back from the things that I really want to be doing and the joy that can come out of a process. And I think there's also an element of perfectionism for me that is like trying to pr protect myself from anything bad that could hurt me. And so when I see this photo, the first thing I think of is my nail polish because it is chipped and I know that I was freaking out about that. Behind this smile, I'm like dying about my chipped nail polish because I remember obsessively painting my nails like every couple of days as I just couldn't deal with chipped nail polish. And it's just so interesting like what my brain would like focus in on when I was really experiencing like something deeper. But it came out in like the focusing on chipped nail polish. Wow, naked palette. I have to say, I still use my Tresemme heat tamer spray, so still using that years later. A part of me is like, who am I even looking at right now? Wow, I haven't worn that much eyeliner in a really long time. Oh my god. Okay, this photo. I have talked about this photo. This is the photo where I felt like I had to be a certain way in order for people to like me and want to watch my videos. I felt like for a summary video, I had to show more of my body, even though I didn't want to be showing more of my body. I have never really felt comfortable showing my body. My favorite thing is to be fully covered and that's just how I've always been. And so when I see this photo, it makes me think about how I betrayed myself. And I just remember how bad I felt when I was taking 
this photo because it was something that I felt like I had to do in order to be pretty and sexy and like more adults and whatever. I just knew deep down that I was betraying myself, but I didn't have the words for it. And I didn't quite have the full awareness of it. Yeah, that's just sad. In my memory, I always come back to this photo because it was such a stark moment for me where I did walk away from taking this photo, where I was completely by myself taking this photo, thinking, hmm, this, this doesn't feel good, but I'm not exactly sure why. Oh my God, Nugget destroying tissue paper. He is still a little monster to this day. He still does this. So Nugget lives with my mom now and he still does this. Nugget is consistent. He's still doing the same things. <laughs> oh my God. This is my annual hot chocolate recipe. I do remember in general, DIY December was so incredibly hard and it really took a toll on me because I virtually had no social life and I don't think that's a good thing. When I was younger, I thought that was something that was an easy sacrifice and a no-brainer and now my female friendships are absolutely essential to my well-being and I will not sacrifice them. I need to see my friends regularly and have time away from work. I completely sacrificed my social life for so many years. I pushed people away. I was not a good friend. I was not good to myself. I really wasn't taking care of myself during this like DIY December madness um, because I was posting videos so often scrambling to try and like think of new ideas and create content and then get it up on time. While I did like this hot chocolate and it is delicious, the thing that comes up for me is like that really insulated and isolating world of just trying to keep up and thinking that whatever you're doing is not enough and that you need to keep doing more. I just want to tell this version of myself, it's enough. You're okay. This is way more then enough. Go spend time with the people that you care about. Go find some people that you care about and take care of yourself. Shoot, I didn't even know that that would come up. DIY December. This is when the Revlon lip butters had come out and I was just like an animal, like going to the drugstore, like trying to find these Revlon lip butters. Any drugstore or Target that I passed, I was like, I gotta go in and look for the Revlon lip butters. <laughs> That's really how it was. Oh man. Also, those like little bokeh bubbles on photos too. Those were the days, right? <sighs> Good stuff. Oh my gosh. This is my Hunger Games tutorial. I remember being really excited about this because I thought I had done a good job and I remember receiving so many mean comments about it. And I don't really remember why. I remember feeling so down and crying and just being so heartbroken because I had planned out this video. I had done the tutorial like outside in the park and it was like really heartbreaking for me to get such a negative response over the years what I've learned is whenever you're doing anything but especially something creative I can spend the time doing the work and creating the thing but then I let it go and it's not mine anymore and it's not within my control to try and control what other people are going to think about it. And that has taken me so long to learn and I'm always learning something new about it too. Especially at that time because, you know, there were a lot of people on social media making YouTube videos, but it wasn't like it was today. I felt so incredibly isolated and I felt like I didn't have a space where I could honestly vocalize those feelings of hurt and really explore them in a deeper way. I felt like I had to just bottle it up, try to ignore it, and then just try to be more perfect next time. Spoiler alert, 
that tactic doesn't work. Oh my god, seeing this. We can see my pillow pet panda here in the bottom left corner. There he is. This was the room where I, one, had the discovery that I was spending way too much time on my devices. That was really like my first moment of like something needs to change here in my behavior. But also, things were always messy and I usually had a pile of like something that I was trying to hide. I was just like pushing it, trying to get it off camera. Like, no one can see this mess that I've made, but oh my God, just know that there was like, a sometimes like a pile that was like a good two feet high of just like clothes, products. Like, I don't even know. It was like a magnet. Like things just like went to the pile. And I was just trying to get it out of the frame. Thank the Lord, I don't live my life in piles anymore because <laughs> that was not sustainable for me at all. Oh my gosh. I remember meeting so many people in Singapore, so many viewers, and I was just absolutely blown away that there were people across the world that were watching my videos. I was happy with one person showing up, but to see so many people taking time out of their day to just be there with me was really incredible. Yeah, that's something I still think about today. Oh my gosh! This was at VidCon. VidCon, especially during this time, was like going through such a big transition because it was going from a smaller event and turning into something that was like drastically bigger every year. So it was like this huge shift happening and I think also just a huge shift happening in the industry of YouTube and social media in general. I remember 2014 as the year where brands and advertisers and the traditional media world taking social media more seriously. 2014 really being that year of like massive change. And I feel like VidCon really reflected that. It went from being an event where everyone was kind of like mixed in together to then like more of a separation happening between people who were attending VidCon, people who were at VidCon as talent. And honestly, with an event growing to be so big, it is something that had to happen as hard as it was to feel like this personal disconnect because everyone was just kind of like off doing like their own things and I wouldn't really see people throughout the entire course of my time there and if I did it was really fleeting and so I remember thinking wow this is this is a moment of like significant shift happening here just holistically within the entire industry and also, I wish I still had that shirt. <laughs> oh, you know what I think happened to it? I think my mom washed it and it shrunk. Like it was just like a tiny shirt. <laughs> okay, seeing the background here makes me feel really warm and fuzzy on the inside because this was my favorite place that I lived in. It was in this apartment in Manhattan Beach and I associate this place with like warm and fuzzy feelings even though there were like difficult things that happened in that place but it's because I felt like this was the place that I went home to and I felt safe there. I really feel like this was such a healing place for me and it was the first place that really felt like home to me. I had never really felt truly at home until I had this apartment and I remember like for the first time too like feeling more like an adult because I had taken the time to get help decorating it. It was the place where I came to terms with my sexuality. It helped give me a place to come out in and to always come home to. <laughs> Oh my god, after something so like emotional and warm and fuzzy, then there's me in a donut. <laughs> okay, so this is something that a viewer made and I still love it. This is amazing. If anybody wants to do this now to me, I approve. You have my consent to put my face in 
donuts. So if you feel like you want to do that, go for it. I have to say, even though I don't post about donuts as much as I used to, um, I think it's because I have been intentional about living my life offline too. I will say that almost every Saturday, I eat donuts. So just know when it's Saturday morning on the East Coast, I'm probably eating donuts. Oh my God. Okay, so this is when I had my Airbnb in New York City and this was really the time where I was coming out to myself. I was so excited to be in New York, but it was also a really difficult time. I spent so much time on my own and there were days where I realized, oh my gosh, I haven't talked to a single person this entire day. And when I would speak for the first time, it felt weird. But this time in New York City was so important. And this picture was taken by my mom. Also, if I'm gonna be, if I'm gonna go here, I also remember being unkind to my mom in this moment too because I wanted the photo to look a certain way and I remember being frustrated with her and I still have those moments now where she will take photos and I'll get frustrated with her but the difference is now I feel like I apologize and I catch myself and I just like didn't even know in that moment like I just thought it was okay to like be annoyed with my mom and kind of like harumph away mom if you're watching this I'm sorry for <laughs> just being a little cranky grumpster it looks great mom you did a great job I don't know what the hell I was complaining about oh my gosh so I will say this is one of the outfit videos that I did that I really loved putting together. I loved the outfits in this photo and this was a video that I shot during this time where I was coming out to myself and I just really felt like myself in all of these outfits at that time and it felt so good. I think that's one of the amazing things about beauty and fashion. I think, you know, there can be like a darker underbelly, but I think this was an example of how powerful it can be when you are presenting yourself in a way that truly feels like who you are because I just felt so good. I felt like I was coming into who I was always meant to be. And the other amazing thing about this, less than a year later, I got an apartment in Brooklyn on Washington Street and you can see the building in the background and I remember being on that street that day and thinking oh my gosh I love it here how amazing would it be to live on this street and less than a year later I was living on that street and that is just oh it gives me goosebumps it's synchronicity oh it's just amazing it's Thank you. This is a moment of thank you. Oh my gosh, this is another moment of thank you. This was one of the best shoots I have ever done in my entire career. I love that Darling Magazine did not retouch any of the people in their magazine, which at the time was really uncommon and it still is pretty uncommon now. Most places, whether they're a magazine or a brand, are still using some kind of like airbrushing, even if it's super light, but they do not retouch anything. And I was so proud to be a part of this shoot. Oh, and the next photo is a photo from that shoot with a giant donut. And I will say, because they don't retouch, you can see the scar that I have on my shoulder, which has actually gotten bigger over the years. If I had done this shoot with anyone else at this time, they would have retouched my scar or tried to cover it up. Um, and the fact that it's just there was just such a big thing at that time. <sighs> oh my gosh. This was for the streamies and I wore pants. And this was really like the first time where I was like, oh, I can wear pants and feel comfortable and also feel 
like I'm dressed up. I also cut my hair short at that time too. So I love that you can really see like the angle. I was really starting to experiment with how I wanted to present myself, especially in a post coming out world for me. Speaking of post coming out, something I did after coming out was interview the president. This was just an amazing moment. I had been working on my questions for months before the interview happened. Eileen was such a big part of the experience for me because she was a huge support. Like just having her presence there was like such a big deal. And I'm getting emotional over it because it was such just like this release after the interview happened because we had really fought hard for the tampon tax question to be included in that interview and i know other people fought really hard for that question to be there and it was just we had no idea what was going to happen afterwards but we knew that it was something that needed to be put out into the world on in a bigger way and we just knew that like something big had happened but we didn't know what exactly that was going to look like in the aftermath um i just felt so proud i just remember thinking before interviewing the president i was like standing there because I was the last one to go, trying to be as present as possible. And I really remember so vividly, and I'm glad that I forced myself to be present. I just remembered thinking, oh my gosh, like thinking about my past self and how much pain I'd been through and how I never thought that I would be in that position and that there would be people who believed in me enough to help get me to that position. And it just really made me so proud of my younger self for just, I just kept going even when I felt like I couldn't. And that moment standing there before the interview was just, like, thank you, thank you, because look what's happening right now, something that you never even imagined in a million years in so many different ways. Like, like, what is your job? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and like, you're standing in the White House about to interview the President of the United States. Um, you have so much love in your life, just so many things. Um, and so remembering that day and that interview is so much more than just the actual interview that happened. It's for me about remembering how much healing had happened up until that point and how much healing happened after and still continues to this day because healing is ongoing and I think reflecting on this photo because I haven't looked at it in a long time is healing me in a way today. Oh, <sighs> this is a no makeup photo and I feel like this was really the time where I started to become a lot more comfortable with how I look without makeup. I actually started to like myself more without makeup on and so I started posting myself without makeup more and this was celebrating um two years after coming out also i still have that wild fox jumper oh my gosh okay so this is the one photo that i knew would be here because christina was like is there anything that you like definitely want me to include and i was like well there is this picture of butter i specifically took this photo because one, the caption says butter, period. But it was also the time on Instagram where you could put, post a photo of butter like this and nobody would bat an eyelid. I mean, I could, I would still post a photo of butter like this, but it was just something that pretty much everyone did. Like people would just post whatever they wanted. I just wanted to remind myself that as much as social media has changed, there was a time where I was just posting butter. And to just like 
sink into that simplicity, you know, and try to remember the butter days a little bit more than like the trying to curate like perfection world that all of us are trying to navigate right now. So I feel like this is really like my anchor, the butter day. <laughs> For all these years, this photo has stuck in my mind. It's just butter. This is a good one to end on. The butter days. Oh, the butter days. I feel like now I'm just gonna be saying that and hopefully people will know what I'm talking about. That is it for this video. I feel a lot of different things. I feel a little bit drained because I basically just sobbed here on camera, but I also feel like in the process of reflecting on these various photos from all different gears, different points in my life, I have felt an element of healing too. Um, because I think ultimately, even though there were some like harder moments and sad moments within these photos where I was smiling, um, I'm just so grateful to my younger self. And I think that I've just learned to have so much more compassion for her. At the same time too, this was fun. I'm so grateful for all of you because so many of you have been with me over all of these years through these different experiences and life moments and big shifts, whether they're larger cult cultural shifts or smaller personal shifts. And I feel like there really aren't words to describe how incredibly special this experience has been these last 10 years. I feel like we have grown together and I feel so incredibly privileged to have been a part of your life for these years and I'm so grateful that you have chosen to be a part of mine. I am just so, so like in awe still that I am like in this position and I am, I just can't say thank you enough for being here with me. It truly has been just the greatest privilege and just something that I never thought was even possible. So thank you. I'm just gonna go now because I guess I'm crying again. I will see you next week. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye.